So that was a very interesting way of looking at the negative and positive spaces that I just discussed, the open spaces, the closed spaces, also how the light hits the pieces and creates lights and darks. And that is called movement of the piece. So art can be just about anything. We saw that one artist decided to take parts of damaged cars and use those to be his sculpture and bend them and hammer them and let the color of the part of the metal play off the, the rustiness of another part. And in the part about the wedding chapel, we see what she talks about as found objects. We can create a sculpture by not carving or not using clay to build up, but by adding objects that we find. For instance, you could do a nature sculpture, a nature sculpture where you collect rocks and twigs and leaves and you put them together with an adhesive and you create a sculpture. Or if you want it to be a sculptor, you might take a hunk of clay and carve off some and add some to other places and create your sculpture that way. So adding and re reducing, right? And then you could also um, do the method of building where you're, you're welding, like we saw with the first piece, and we're adding to the sculpture by welding on other pieces. The first piece was very interesting, I think, and that was the one that had to do with surrealism. And remember, surrealism was sort of from a dreamlike state and also uh, was influenced by the war. And what I thought was very interesting about that first piece was that when you looked at the poles that came down, the play between the negative and positive spaces in sort of like the leg structure, even though it wasn't a leg, um, really was very interesting to look at. It took a lot of thought to make it narrower and, and wider in certain spots so that light would play off the negative and positive pieces. Conversely, when we looked at that really bulky silver metal one, okay, it was very bulky geometric forms, again, the artist is thinking about negative and positive space, but also how he finishes the metal. And the metal with that finish will also reflect uh, a feeling of the sculpture. So there are many ways to make a sculpture by adding, by taking away, by attaching, by using fine uh, found objects, all of which have a place in fine art even if it's a used car piece or a tire, if they work on that and they bring it together in an art form, it is considered a fine art piece of sculpture. The final thing that I'd like to talk about today is a little bit more about mobiles and Alexander Calder. Many people have done mobiles in the past, but he is very, uh, prominent in this modern art technique. Alexander Calder was raised by a sculptor father and a painter mother. So he had a great deal of art background behind him when he started his voyage into being a sculptor. He was always constructing things out of wood and pieces of found objects when he was a child. So from early on, he was very interested in art and um, with the influence of his parents became very um, well known. So he's working in three dimensions and he created mobiles that would move, um, as I said earlier, with a breeze or just floating air and cause a feeling of movement, all right? Now, what I want you to do is to look at this next video on Alexander Calder and see how he manipulates art. When the video is over, the lecture will be done. Please make sure that you look at the homework section of my um, area so that you can look at the grave art that we discussed first. So you have a 
complete picture of from the beginning to how art moved through the early times into times before and after World War I and after World War II and into modern art. And I will see you next week. And next week, I'm going to give you some more ideas about what's going on as far as upcoming midterms and also remind you to watch for those emails that Jake is sending out every week that have important information for you, especially for the classes that are going to be held at Nyack College. I hope you have a good week. Watch this last one on uh, Calder and I'll see you next week.